The old Atlas with its watchstone juggling, its zone splitting and every confusing aspect that came with it is changing. In Siege of the Atlas, everything is being simplified for the better. Today, we're going to talk about everything we know for now about the new Atlas. Let's get into it. Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here and I'm back to talk about the Atlas being brought to us in 3.17 Siege of the Atlas. A massive strip down is happening, in my opinion, definitely for the better, especially for newer players or people that would look at the old Atlas and get quite confused because honestly it was a bit of a convoluted mess. Today we're going to be talking about everything we do know about this Atlas, everything that comes with it with a new complete Atlas tree and a bunch of other stuff. So let's jump right into it. Atlas progression is now simpler than ever before. Gone are watchstones, basically deleted from the game, and instead we have one massive atlas with no split zones. It is very simple to begin the atlas. You start at the bottom of the atlas on tier 1 maps and progress up. If you run a tier 1 map, you can find tier 2 maps. You find a tier 2 map, you can find tier 3 maps. Because there's no watchstones, there's no socketing of watchstones to be able to find hidden maps, or to be able to even complete tier four, five, six maps. As you progress up the Atlas, you will just progress through the levels of the maps themselves. Really, really simple. However, the complexity is still there, and we'll talk about that. In Siege of the Atlas, Atlas passives are being moved from the Atlas passives trees themselves in separate zones to a completely separate Atlas passive tree. This Atlas passive tree has over 600 points, and it's really, really simple to gain an Atlas passive. For every single map that you complete for the first time, you gain one Atlas passive point. This means with 117 maps, there are 117 Atlas passive points that you can complete and gain and socket into your Atlas tree itself. This means that unlike the previous endgame Atlas, these passive points are completely front loaded. You'll be obtaining many, many more passive points at the beginning of your Atlas grind through white and yellow maps than you will trying to complete the whole Atlas at the end. Most of our favorite Atlas passive nodes from old Atlas zones are being kept and brought to this new global Atlas passive tree, meaning that you're not stuck in farming specific maps to only benefit from, say, that ritual node or something like that. All of your Atlas passive points are applying globally to every single map you run. An amazingly awesome change, meaning that we can really just farm whatever map we want with whatever Atlas passives we want on them. It is important to note that the Atlas passive tree is league account bound. So every character that you make within a specific league will run off the same Atlas passive tree that you have constructed. The map favoriting system and the map upgrading system are also kept in a different way, in the same complexity, but a much more understandable way. First, let's talk about upgrading the maps. Before, you would have watchstones and you would have to socket these watchstones into each individual Atlas passive uh, zone or Atlas zone in the Atlas that would then unlock hidden maps and upgrade your maps. You will no longer, as I've stated, you'll no longer have access to watchstones and instead we're getting access to void stones. Now, void stones are complete endgame content. They're not content that everyone is going to be able to complete, but this doesn't mean that everyone's not going to be able to very passively get to tier 16 maps. No, you will always be able to get to tier 16 maps. What these void stones will allow you to do by beating Uber Elder, Maven, the Exarch, and the Eater of Worlds, you'll obtain one watch, uh, sorry, one void stone, which you can socket into the bottom of your Atlas. You can only obtain one each of these, and as you socket them in, it will upgrade every single map on your Atlas to higher tiers. With all four socketed, every single map will be tier 16. This has some really, really awesome implications with what we're gonna talk about next, which is the favoriting system. Map favoriting is now done through unlocking slots on the side that allow you to favorite certain maps. There are 12 slots in total and will unlock progressively as you progress through the Atlas. 
and each of these 12 slots you can either slot multiple different of your favorite maps or one map in every single slot. Each slot is a 10 times multiplier to that map dropping, granted that you're running the respective tier that it can drop in. This means that with all four void stones socketed, and say for example you've got tower map socketed in every single favorited zone, that is 10 times 12, a 120 times multiplier to that map dropping over any other tier 16. So if you're running tier 16s and you've got all four watch stones, uh, four void stones, I'm gonna be calling them watch stones for a while, all four void stones socketed, that means that you have over a 50% chance of dropping the map that you've favorited with every single map that drops. Talk about Atlas specific map farming. This is an amazingly awesome change. Sextants are also being changed a lot. You will only be able to obtain sextants in tier 14 maps and above, and there's a lot of sextant mods that are being removed, but there's a lot being added as well. One of the fan favorites, Nemesis, is being removed because it was, in Chris's eyes, a little bit too powerful. Uh, but there's a lot more mods coming through with lots of new uh, types of content like legions and everything like that. Um, that we're going to be getting from these sextants. You can suck at the, you can, you can, sorry, apply these sextants to the void stones themselves and they will apply globally to every single map that you run for, you know, the traditional three uses. So sextants are still here and they're still very powerful. You should be grateful for that. Zana is also leaving the Atlas for now and Kirak is taking her place. Now the way that this is going to function is a little bit different to how you would initially encounter Zana previously. You would find Zana in a map and then you could open one of her portals in a map uh, and you would go into that map and you would complete that map or do the objective or something like that. Now there wasn't usually any reward for completing the objective in a Zana map there. Uh, so this is being changed to be very heavily loaded towards the reward aspect for Kirak. Now you're no longer going to find Kirak, or the old Zana, in a map. You're just going to passively generate Kirak missions that then you can run from your hideout or from the map device uh, by clicking on Kirak, selecting one of the maps, and there's a bunch more stuff coming through. I've got uh, written down here, um, there's a bunch more stuff like additional conquerors, ritual, expedition, even monstrous treasure that you can find in all of those maps there as well. And lastly, let's not forget about the new Pinnacle fights, the Searching Exarch and the Eater of Worlds. These two new bosses are supposed to be on par with Maven difficulty or even more difficult, but there are sub bosses that you can fight as well if you feel like you'll never get to that point. As Siege of the Atlas commences, we will discover much more about these bosses and exactly how to target farm them, but for now I'll give a short overview. During your expedition through the Atlas, you will begin to encounter influences of either the Exarch or the Eater of Worlds. Once encountered, you can modify your maps via the map device, just like you would with Maven, to add influence of the Eldritch Horrors. The more maps you run influenced of a specific horror, the more mobs inhabit the maps and the closer the horrors get to you, until you encounter one of the sub-bosses of the Exarch or the Eater, the Black Star or the Infinite Hunger. If you defeat the boss, you can continue to progress into the highest tier of maps. There, you will have the opportunity to encounter the horrors themselves. It is important to note that you can hard focus one specific boss or you can split your focus between the two factions. The choice is yours. And look, that's about it for now on the Atlas. I've got a bunch of other content coming out for everything else that's been talked about in the reveal, patch notes, all of the new uniques, that kind of stuff. So remember to hit that sub button down below and ring that bell. Content is just getting better and better. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this content and I'll be releasing a bunch more stuff about the Atlas as well once the league starts and once we know all of the ins and outs of this new Atlas. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Badger is out.